Hey guys, Kate here. Um, I was actually asked to put together a cycling specific post ride stretchy type thing. So here I am doing that. I put on my favorite cycling shirt. So hopefully it gives me a little bit more street cred with you riders out there. Um, fingers crossed, let me know. Um, you can also, if you'd like, take a second, pause the video, grab a couple blocks, put on your favorite cycling shirt, roll out your mat, and I'll see you in a few. Hey guys, so we're gonna get started by sitting. So you can sit with your legs crossed in front of you or whatever is comfortable. I like to sit on a blanket. You can grab a couch cushion or a pillow or something, anything that gets your hips higher than your knees it allows you to sit a little bit more comfortably so you can find a little more length through your spine, right? So you're just gonna drop your chin to your chest to start and try to keep the tips of your shoulder blades drawing in toward each other on your back. So ideally when you're on your bike and maybe if you're riding in the drops, you've got enough back muscle <laughs> activation that you don't get a ton of strain in your neck, but we're just gonna take a second to work into your neck here. So just give your head a little shake side to side And when you inhale, you're gonna roll your right ear up over your right shoulder. And then exhale, roll back down through center. And inhale, roll up to the left side, just smooth half circles. When you exhale, roll down through center. And one more time, you're gonna roll up and over to the right and just let that right ear hover over your shoulder. And this time you're gonna take your right hand to the side of your head, right above your ear. And you can use the weight of your hand to start to pull a little bit of length through the left side of your neck. And then without leaning, you're gonna take your left fingertips to the floor right outside your left hip and just start to walk them away from you. It's so just so you get full extension through that left arm. Inhale. And when you exhale, slowly release your chin to your chest. Your hands can come back to your lap. And then we're gonna go up the other side, right? So left ear over the left shoulder. Feel both shoulders relax. And then take the left hand to the side of your head there. And you're gonna give a gentle pull. It doesn't have to be too much, but it can be more if you'd like. And then take your right fingertips to the floor and just walk them out. And breathe into the right side. Okay, and then hands back to the floor. You're gonna take your chin to your chest. You're gonna keep your head bowed here, but interlace your fingers. And then take your interlaced hands to the back of your skull. So you're just gonna let your hands rest on the back of your head, right at the base of your skull there. And then drop your elbows toward your ears. And you can use the weight of your hands to gently start to press down. And if it feels like it's too much strain, then lift your hands a little bit. <laughs> you don't have to jam your chin into your chest, just enough to start to feel a stretch through the back of the neck. I get it all the way down into the middle of my back. All right, so you're gonna keep your head bowed, keep your hands where they are, but start to lift your elbows back up toward the ceiling. And you can feel the tips of your shoulder blades pull in toward each other. Okay, and with your head still bowed, keep that head down. You're gonna press the back of your head into your hands as you press your hands into your head. And just feel the activation through the muscles in your neck, through the upper back, and breathe. And your next inhale, you're just gonna lift your head now. Keep the elbows spreading apart from each other and lean back. You can imagine there was a big beach ball behind you or something, I don't know. On your next inhale, you're gonna take the arms and just reach them straight up. Keep your shoulders dropping away from your ears, but reach up into your fingertips. And when you exhale, you're gonna take your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. And you're gonna bend your elbows and take your thumbs to the sacrum, right at the base of your spine. And then you're gonna hug your elbows in like you had an accordion or something back there. You're gonna play the elbow accordion. And I'm gonna fall off my blanket. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna keep squeezing in Feel how you can broaden through the collarbones here. So we spend a lot of time hunched over, right? So now we're just gonna undo a little bit of that. And you wanna keep the fingers interlaced, keep this action of opening through the collarbones and start to work to straighten the elbows. If they don't straighten, it's not a big deal. Wherever you are, you wanna start to press your knuckles down and back toward the floor and lift your chest up. Doesn't have to be a huge dramatic thing. 
Just take another breath into the front of your body, through your chest, through the ribs. And then you're gonna swing these fists around to the outer left hip, so they kind of wrap around here. And then you're gonna hug that elbow accordion in again, so squeeze that left arm in. And then drop your left ear over your left shoulder and give your head a gentle shake. And that right elbow can't move much, but you want to imagine that you could squeeze that toward the left one. Yeah, then lift your head up. Take your hand, stretch it back behind you, and you're going to swing to the other side. Nice and easy. Squeeze it in. Elbows draw toward each other, left and right. Don't chicken wing out to the side. Keep it in. And then drop your right ear over your right shoulder. Give your head a gentle shake here. Okay, then you're going to stretch the hands back behind you for a second and then release the hands, roll out your shoulders. Okay, so now we're gonna come right into table. So you can get rid of that blanket. Move it to the side. You can keep your blocks or whatever you've got at the ready if you think you're gonna need them, right? Shoulders are gonna come right over your wrists, hips over your knees, and you're gonna take the right foot and just kick it back behind you. Tuck your toe to the mat and push through your heel. And you wanna make it enough so you feel a nice stretch through your calf. That's it, and then you draw the belly button in and lift this right leg up for a little bird dog action. Take the left arm, stretch it forward. So we all know that core strength is super important, but you know, let's not for, forget <laughs> that core strength is super important. So take a breath here. And then you take the left hand to the floor, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. You can walk the hands forward, and you can kind of shimmy this right foot forward and drop your hips into the space that you've kind of left behind. And you can open your toes 45 degrees out to the side if you want, if it feels a little bit too intense with the foot fa facing straight forward. Soften your shoulders. Take a couple breaths. This is just nice to start to work into this outer right hip, but also into the, the hip flexor muscles on the left side. Okay, and then drag your hips back. We're gonna step back keep the hands forward like we had them before when we were on a lizard tuck your toes and just lift your knees and you're just gonna take a second to pedal out your feet just a little downward facing dog just enough to work again through the legs and then drop your knees to the floor you're gonna walk your hands back underneath your shoulders and take your left foot back behind you tuck your toe to the mat and get that same calf stretch you gave yourself on the right side And then you want to shift forward gently, lift that left foot up. Keep sucking your belly button in as much as you can and take the right arm, stretch it forward and find your balance here. Nothing too fancy today. Inhale. And when you exhale, right hand's going to come to the floor. Left foot steps to the outside of your left hand and we work into lizard on this side. So you can walk the hands forward a bit, open the toes, sink the hips. Busy body's got to go check out what's going on in the neighborhood. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Good boy. <sighs> and sink. <laughs> One more breath here as you let this right thigh get really heavy. All right, you're going to keep your hands where they are. Step this left foot back. Tuck your toes. And again, downward facing dog. That now he's yelling at him for walking by the house. Pedal it out. Okay, and then drop your knees back down to the mat. Walk your hands underneath your shoulders. From here, we're gonna take the right foot and step it up between your thumbs. And sink the hips again. Okay? And now we're gonna keep the left hand on the floor. You can keep it on the floor, or if you're feeling super tight here, you can bring a block or anything you've got underneath this left hand. You're gonna bring your right hand to your right thigh. And you want to sink the hips, but keep drawing the leg bones in. So you need to integrate to stretch safely. And then we're going to bend this left knee <laughs> and reach around and try to find that foot with your right hand and just sink here. You can roll the right toes open if you want. Lean a little bit into your left hand. Roll your right shoulder open and try not to scream. There you go. One more breath. And then you're going to release that foot. 
can bring the hands back down to the floor. And now we're gonna take your right foot and scooch it back just a little bit. So when we come up, both hands on this right thigh, your shoulders and your hips and your bottom knee are in one straight line, all right? And now you wanna pull the low belly in and scoop the tailbone under. And if you're tight in your left side, so as in, in the front of your leg here, you may already feel a stretch. I already have one. So good, good on you. Take the left arm and stretch it straight up. You're gonna take a breath here. And when you exhale, just lean gently to the right. We're not bending back, we're just leaning straight over. And honestly, it should not take much. Keep lengthening the tailbone and think about this left thigh bone stretching down toward the floor. Inhale, come on back up. When you exhale, bring both hands to the floor. We're gonna tuck the left toes under, lift your left knee. And now you may feel like these feet are a little bit too far apart. You're gonna hop your left foot forward just to touch, angle the heel in, and then work to straighten this right leg for a little pyramid pose. Again, if your hamstrings are super tight and you find that you can't straighten this right leg, First off, that's fine, right? If you've got something that you can put your hands on to make this a little more gentle, then by all means do so. But you can work the leg without straightening it completely. You can still get the benefits of this pose. So the idea here is that you're gonna push the right foot down into the floor while you're dragging the right hip back. So we activate the hamstring muscle while we stretch it which is super important, especially if you're cycling or if you're an avid runner, that the hamstring learns to stretch while it's activated. Just keep working on squaring off the hips. Push firmly back through the left heel too. Inhale. And let it out. And then, just for kicks, you're gonna see if you can come onto that right heel. You're gonna drag the ball of the foot away from the floor. And then keep the toes lifted, but press down through the ball of your foot. Then you're gonna press down through the, all five toes. And then bend that right knee and drop your left heel. Plant your hands and step it back for a downward facing dog. All right, inhale, come forward into plank. We've talked about core strength here. So we're just gonna hit a plank before we hit the other side. Deep breath, and then drop your knees to the floor. You can let your thighs hit, your hips hit, elbows stay in, shoulders stay back. You're gonna come all the way down. Take the forehead or your chin to the floor, untuck your toes, and then sweep your hands behind your back just as we did in the beginning. You're gonna interlace your fingers. Lift the heads of your arm bones off the floor. Pull the upper arms in, and then drag your knuckles down toward your heels as you peel your chest off the floor. Anchor down through the feet. Inhale. And when you exhale, release your hands underneath your shoulders. Press yourself up into table. And step your left foot forward. All right, so we're just going to sink the hips here. Just find a regular old lunge. Lift the chest. Okay, right hand's gonna stay on the floor or a block. We're gonna do our quad stretch on that right side. So take your left hand to your thigh, start to twist yourself open, and then we're gonna bend that right knee and you can grab a hold of the foot. If the foot's not accessible and you wanna practice your lassoing skills, you can always lasso that foot, <laughs> rodeo style. Sink the hips. Keep dragging the leg bones in toward each other. You wanna keep scissoring the inner thighs even here. Lean a little bit into your right hand and roll this left shoulder open. Breathe. It's not so bad. <laughs> Maybe it is. All right, and then from here, you're gonna release this back foot. Walk your hands in a little bit. Scooch this left foot underneath you. So when we come upright, again, we're in one straight line instead of lunging forward like we normally do. Left hand on the top of your thigh. You can tuck or untuck your back toes, whatever works. Now you're gonna scoop the tailbone, lift the low belly in, and maybe now you already have it with that little tilt of the pelvis, you get that stretch through the front of the leg. Take your right arm alongside your ear, lengthen up through the right side, and just a tiny tilt over to the left. It doesn't need much more than that. Q. 
Keep lengthening your tailbone toward the floor. And then slowly you're gonna come on back up. Bring your hands to the mat. You can grab your blocks if you want them. We're gonna go into our pyramid pose. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. And we're gonna drop that right heel in a little bit to the left so the foot's on a, on a diagonal. And then drag this left hip back and breathe. And you wanna to try to maintain nice square hips here. It's hard to figure out the proprioception. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult because you can't really figure out where your hips are. You can't see them, they're hard, to, they're hard to feel, right? But try to keep the hips as square as you can. As you push this left foot forward and down into the mat, drag the head of your left leg bone back into the socket. Reintegrate. Soften your shoulders and breathe. And if you have a little bit of a wobble, a little bit of a shake in the leg, it's all right. And now we're gonna do the super fun part. You're gonna peel the ball of your foot up off the floor, press your heel down, and then press through the ball of your foot. Press through all five toes. Okay, and we're gonna bend this left knee, walk your hands slightly forward, and step back one more downward facing dog. Spread your fingers, press into the thumb side of the hands, wrap your triceps in toward your ears, push forward and down into the mat, drag up and back through your sitting bones, and then back and down through your heels. That's a lot. Okay, then inhale, come forward into plank. When you exhale, drop your knees to the mat, sweep your feet to one side, take a seat. Okay, so, there you go. You can take a second here to sit and chill if you want, or you can, you know, shut off the video and go do something else. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or you're looking for something else. Um, anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you soon. Bye.